What's going on guys? Big VP back one of the Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're doing an overview on Hogwarts Magical Pinball. Killing it, man. It's gorgeous. Let's do it. Alright guys, you know, if you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. You will see everything, everything I do. And just the joy and the excitement and just the passion. That's what everybody tells me. I just went to a family event and everybody's like, Vic, I see your videos, man. I like the passion. You're like, and my wife was like, you do too much of this. And I'm like, well, I talk with my hands, but <laughs> again, why are you not on the socials? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP and also be sure to subscribe on YouTube. I'm doing a lot more live streaming now, especially when it comes to the V pins. I'll bring back the arcade live streams as well. Yada yada yada. We're not talking about me. We're gonna be doing this overview on this gorgeous pin. I oh man, this is this is a thing of beauty. This is Project Canada's virtual pinball machine known as Hogwarts Magical Pinball. Again, this one we're doing a brief overview, not even brief, I'll, I'll talk your ear off, but we're just gonna go over basics. What is this kind of like specs? What's going on? What's all the add-ons, the toys and the features and such. In another separate video, we will go full in depth. I will be removing the TV. I'm also gonna be doing the tutorial for Canada. Again, this is going to Canada. I'm gonna be Take it off the legs, we're gonna put it in a crate. I have to build a crate and we're sending it out along with his gun car. But again, on this one, just kind of keep it simple and uh, try to keep it quick, but you know me, I like to talk. There's a lot to talk about with this. <laughs> so again, I do wanna keep an overview on this. I actually shot this already four times and I'm kind of going off tangent. Let's first talk about the screens on this. We're gonna talk about screen specs. We'll talk about the PC specs. We're going to talk about the toys, which is also DAF links. If you ever inquired about a virtual pinball machine, you've heard me and seen me use the word toys. Toys are things such as solenoids, beacons, strobes, LED matrices, shaker motor, SSF. All this stuff is what really brings a virtual pinball machine to reality and to life, to bring it as close to real as possible. So. The best thing is, let's go through the specs, because like I said, I, just, I shot this a couple of times and I keep going off tangent. Let's talk about the basics, and then I'm gonna come back and talk about each thing. So first, let's talk about the screens on this. So let's start first with the screen specs. This is my first ever 42 inch build. This is no regular, ordinary 42 though. This is running the LG C2 OLED. 42 inch play field with 120 hertz display. That hurts is a big deal, okay? The backlash, we do have a 32 inch backlash and we have the 17 inch DMD. As you can see right here, this is replicating a standard pinball machine. You can see like the look of it, the back box, the ratio, the size, whatever you wanna call it, this looks like a proper pinball machine. As far as the PC specs on this, we are running an i7, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte M.2 SSD, and as far as graphics cards, he went with the 3060 Ti. Beautiful PC setup. He did get it pre-built. The customer did supply the PC, just like his arcade cabinet, and it works. Vic, I thought you needed a 3070. Honestly, this 3060 Ti, it's, it's doing beautifully. So if you are in the idea of what GPU, again, this is running a 3060 Ti. Yes, it is outputting 4K. Yes, it is outputting 120 hertz. So let's get into the force feedback, which I call toys. If you ever inquired about a virtual pinball machine, I use the word toys. Pricing depends on the toys. This stuff right here is what makes a virtual pinball machine look and feel almost like a real pinball machine. I had to write this stuff down. There's a lot. There's stuff that I have in my personal build. There is stuff that I have done on other builds that I don't have in my personal build, but this does have newer stuff that I've never experienced or done before. And now I have a good feeling I could do it for the future. So let's start with the basics. Solenoids, that's the click clack. That's the stuff that I put on the walls. That's what really gives you 
the feel of slingshots and bumpers and such. There are always 10 solenoids. I don't go less than that. There's always 10 solenoids. As far as flashers, I do have RGB flashers. Not like how this one is. If you see my personal build, my RGB flashers are using automotive lights. Really kind of police lights. So I do have RGB flashers. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my list. This also does have strobes. So again, automotive strobes. So RGB flashers and strobes. This does also have a shaker motor with the power adjustable knob. I have that in the rear. I have it right now set to like low. When the customer gets it, he can determine how powerful he wants that. Um, as far as underglow, we do have standard non-addressable LEDs for the underglow. I think honestly that's the best thing to do when it comes to these V-pins. Keep the underglow standard, but we're going to be talking about the addressables later on, okay? Also note, you do have RGB flashers and RGB magnet saves, changes colors according to the game and such. As far as also other doffling stuff, LED wise, you do have the addressable LED buttons here along with the launch ball. Again, all communicates with the game. When you start a game, there's not enough coins and you're waiting for coins, only the coin light is lit. When you have enough money to play, the star button is lit. That is just what's great with the software and dofflings, okay? As far as a big thing with realism, yes, we do have the analog plunger. This is a real analog plunger using a potentiometer slider, so it acts like a real plunger, along with the tilt and nudge because of the KL25Z board. I now recently did it to my pin, and I'm doing it to these. I added the tilt and nudge kind of sensor. Basically, you kind of have to put a checkbox in VPX, and now it will really tilt. Before you could nudge, but I didn't have it enough, like powerful enough or dialed in where if you nudge too much, it will actually tilt the machine. If you go and look at the actual promo video, you will actually see me tilt the dragon on Harry Potter bursts out fire and then my flippers die, meaning it's deactivated, you tilt it, you can't play anymore. So again, little stuff like that adds to the realism. As far as sound on this, I am running the 2.1 Logitech Z533 for the stereo sound, basic stereo sound. They're actually right up here, holes here pointing upwards, and I utilize the subwoofer. That is an actual cutout I have in the cabinet. I decased the subwoofer, made a hole in the center of the cabinet, and I have it firing right upwards. Basically, I'll take you underneath and you'll see the subwoofer. But as far as surround sound force feedback, SSF, we do have four Dayton Audio Exciters along the sidewalls, and that's being controlled by two amps. One amp is for the front, and one amp is for the rear. I'm sorry, I, I'm looking at it like this, and I just wanna make sure that I'm hitting everything. The last thing real quick, as far as like the basics that I've always done, is beacons. You right now don't see beacons, but there is ways to substitute a beacon. That right there are beacons. See the big domes? Those are known as beacons. I gave beacons to Project Canada, but you don't see them. I'm actually utilizing the police lights, red and blue. I have them right above the statues inside of the back box. Now let's talk about the newest add-ons, the newest features that I don't even have on my personal pin, nor have I experienced before. These customers luckily said, hey Vic, if you could get it to work, let's rock, let's try it out. I really have to give this kind of props and kudos to this customer here. But before that, let me tell you what I'm talking about. And it's pretty obvious, it is the addressable LEDs. Yes, I understand how addressable LEDs work. I've known before, but once you start getting it into like computer programming and like the virtual pinball stuff, it's a different realm. I've always known about addressable LEDs and all that, but getting it to work with this is a whole new world. So yes, we are talking about the addressable LEDs. Whether you want LED matrix, you want the addressable LEDs along the sides of the play field, you want adjustable LEDs in the back box or even speaker grills. I know how to do it. Now I do have to give a big kudos and a big thank you to this customer here because he really is the one that requested it and pushed for it. He wanted his adjustable LEDs. It then turned to me telling Canada, hey, I'm doing it on his pin. Do you want me to, you know, do you want me to add it to yours? He goes, Vic, if you get it to work, let's rock. Now, I'm going to be talking about these adjustable LEDs because I have a personal, I, I have my opinion on these adjustable LEDs. I've seen other people do it. I've seen other companies do it. 
I don't like I don't like it, but I do like it. I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go in further. I'm gonna most likely make a separate video, but I'll quickly tackle on this later on. We're gonna be talking about the adjustable LEDs. Now, aside from the adjustable LEDs, the other add-ons that I'm super excited for is the custom side rails and the custom lockdown bar. I made his own special video. That is Eric over at Big E Productions. All of these pins are getting custom side rails and custom lockdown bar. Canada said to me, he goes, Vic, he was really the one that was like, Vic, we gotta, I don't really like what you did with your Simpsons pin. We gotta do something with that. And these came out amazing. Again, I did make a video on it. So this does have custom side rails and lockdown bar. And the last and final piece, the little, the, the what is it, what's the word? The, 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 the cherry on top is real glass. Yes, this is real glass. No plexiglass on this, nor on these builds. These are running real tempered glass pieces. Custom cut, I had to get a glazier involved, and yes, we have glass. So another feature and add on to all the builds, and you could also join in on the fun, is my global high score tracker using the QR codes. All of it is already pre-programmed and set. Basically, every table, when you launch it, it does show the QR code on the bottom right of the screen. You take your camera, you scan it, it opens up a website, and then you post your scores globally, high scores. So you could always add it. It's always a great add-on, it's awesome, it's just great. And also, Canada can't wait. Canada's like, send me my pin so I can beat your high scores. I'm like, all right, no worries. So right now, as you can see, we loaded up Pinup Popper. This is the one table I was playing before. It's not a very kid-friendly table, but Big Bang Bar. And I'm pretty sure you can see it there, but right there on the bottom right corner is the QR code. So I come here, take my phone out, I focus on the QR code, I get a little link, and boom. You enter your name, you put your highest score, and then you have to add a photo to it. So it all is amazing. So another little add-on, the global high scores with the QR codes. And now you know me, custom is custom. Canada did like what I did with the Disney pinball machine, which is the custom DMD cutout. Instead of having speakers here, we went with the two statues. So it is a Harry Potter themed cabinet. He did supply me these two collector edition statues. And the biggest thing that's awesome when it came to these address well at ease is as you can see, it is reflecting, bouncing off the actual statues. Some of the games, it looks like it's fire and stuff. It's, it's little details. And again, custom is custom. Also, real quick, as I have you zoomed in on the back box, I'm a big person. I don't put plexiglass on these. There's nothing there. But I do like edge to edge. No gaps, no big black. Like I, I don't want frames. Nothing like that. Obviously you have your DMD frame here, but I don't really like it when people have like these big thick bezels and all that. Now again, custom is custom. I build everything around the screens. I do need the screens. That's the only way to ensure that this is gonna be edge to edge. Even the play field. The play field, I need the screen. Everything here, it's edge to, even the, look at the DMD. The DMD screen is edge to edge, that's just, that's, that's, this to me looks proper. It looks, it looks correct. So we got the specs, the PC, the doff links, the toys and such. Let's talk about the artwork on this. So as you can see, beautiful. It is, it is gorgeous. Again, me and the customer worked together. I'm not going to make, I'm not going to say it's my artwork. We worked together. And as you can see, he went with a Harry Potter themed and even titled it Hogwarts Magical Pinball. The artwork on this is gorgeous. It's, it, it's like it came out of like a factory. It, it's awesome. And hardest thing when it comes to artwork is sometimes you have an idea, and you're gonna definitely see me talk about that with this Star Trek pen. Sometimes you have an idea, and then once you actually start putting it together, it doesn't work out. And it's actually a very funny thing, but I'll talk longer about artwork. You know, customers sent me like 40 images, and you know, once you start trying to put it together and trying to make it blend and it doesn't work out, just gotta kind of sit back, take a breather, and then reevaluate. But the artwork on this is amazing. Uh, I, I'm mind blown by it. Back box, the sides, 
It's got 360 wraps, so I do have also vinyl in the rear. So the back box rear panel has vinyl, along with the actual cabinet rear. Now one thing, because you're gonna see it in the promo video, you see it now, these are real pinball life legs. These are real legs, black legs, and yes, I have them wrapped in that green Teflon thing. It's just a wrap, it's not, that's not what it's gonna look like. The customer will unwrap it. It's just, I wanted to make sure nothing scratches these legs, because they are these painted black legs. They do come from pinball life. They are real pinball legs. I like to make sure it just doesn't get scratched. So please, it's not gonna, he's not gonna get it with the green wrap. He will get it, but he'll unwrap it, obviously. Some obvious stuff. I wanted to make sure I went over the basics, so I'm pretty sure we now understand what is going on in this build. I have so many videos to come, and again, I'm banging out a lot of videos today because I'm planning to create this tomorrow. This is gonna go out tomorrow, so I'm trying to make all the videos I can. The biggest video and kind of like the biggest psych, I don't wanna say the word controversy, but the biggest argument online or biggest question I should say is, should I go 42 or should I go 48, 50 inch play field? Basically standard pinball versus a wide body. So stay tuned for that. I have an actual comparison video that I'm gonna do next, later on, not now, but later on. I'm gonna move this pinball machine right next to this. Again, this is the 42 inch C2 OLED. This is the one that I have in my personal pin, which is the 50 inch QNED. We're gonna put them side by side. I'm gonna probably use my phone to make sure I get good quality video, especially for that 120 hertz screen. So stay tuned. There's so much to talk about. Like my mind is racing, um, but I wanted to make sure at least we went with the basics. Uh, I will launch Harry Potter. We'll do that real quick for this video. So I will play Harry Potter. I'm also gonna turn off the lights because again, glass you probably see like the reflection of the light here so while we do that and while i move you i'm going to launch harry potter and i'm going to turn off the light turn off the garage lights try not to cut this way you can kind of see like the speed of the pc and again this is a pop pack table there's a lot going on i'm going to probably play a little bit where you are and then i'll probably move you Hopefully the RGB flasher isn't blinding for you there, but um, I might turn that computer off. I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna play a quick round, one quick ball, and then I'll move you closer. So I turned off that other pin. Other big thing, I do have pin vol on this, so I am able to control the volume from the front of the cabinet. I will keep the volume low though, because there is music in this, and I don't wanna get hit with copyright, but let's start it off. So again, we have real plunger. I'm gonna move you in closer later on, but that C2 OLED, it is a thing of, it's just, it's just awesome. The proportions on this, it looks great. And then again, same thing like I said, this does have the tilt and the nudge and such. It's just a thing of beauty. You could hear the solenoids. Again, I'm right now playing Harry Potter, so I don't really know as far as RGB flashers or like beacons, how it's set up. But you do see the underglow. I've drained the ball. I'm gonna do one more time. I do know if I hit the cauldron, I'll activate the shaker motor. So we will try to activate that. Hold on. Again, 10 solenoids, you can hear it. Just little details that bring this to reality, realism. And yes, it will never be like a real pinball machine. Please stop sitting. That shaker motor right there. And again, I have it right now set to low. It's a settle rumble. There it is again. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. You can see, you can see the LED matrix gives off like wording and sparkles. Gave me the ball, thank you. You can see again, pup packs, ball saved. Awesome. So I never did this before, we're gonna try this real quick. I'm gonna record the screen as you see here. But keep in mind, my camera is recording 1080p, 60 frames per second. So you might not see the total smoothness of the ball. Again, 4K display, 120 hertz. So let's see how it goes. And you could hear the shaker. I'm gonna try to trap the ball. I should have nudged. Oh, luckily Harry caught it. Thank you, Harry.
I do want to try to capture the ball just so you could see the nudge. Thank you, Harry, again. Cool. So I got that right there. I'm going to nudge. So as you can see, the ball moves. I'm going to move the camera up so you can see the DM, uh, the addressables. So when I tilt, you can see there it says tilt. And just like in real pinball, once you tilt, the flippers are no longer active. We launch the ball. Beautiful. Awesome table. It's got, this is a puff pack type of table. I lost the ball, damn it. This is a puff pack table. So the DMD, it kind of changes as you play. It's just a thing of beauty, honestly. You can see the ball, the eyeball. Cool. Well, there you guys have it. The overview of Hogwarts Magical Pinball 42 inch C2 OLED. 32 inch back glass and 17 inch DMD. Stay tuned for a lot more. We're gonna go full in depth. I'm also gonna do probably a separate video, kind of like a tips and tricks uh, to building a V pin. We're gonna be talking about the actual adjustable LEDs and all that. I have a lot of videos to come. Yes, you will see me wearing the same shirt, but stay tuned. Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. Beauty.